Okay. Uh, this is working. Okay. Hey everyone, it's Christina. Um, I'm here for the first design lesson. So basically, I'm just going to go over the basics of designing a yearbook spread, a uh, generic yearbook spread, and uh, how to use Pinterest. So first, we're going to start with Pinterest. Pinterest is my, my, my main source for design inspiration, as you can see. So let's go to my design board. Basically, I pin whatever I think is aesthetically pleasing or what I think would be look good in a yearbook. So some of them, for example, like this, doesn't have as much yearbook purpose, but I do like to see why I think it, like why I find this appealing to my eye, and then try to apply that to yearbook. Some things are more practically yearbook. For example, uh, this would be a good table of contents use. Um, there are some design styles I like, like this this handwritten font type style. There's a lot of examples of infographics you can look at, like this one, and that's really good for looking at modular design so as you can see I don't really pin like exactly yearbook things just more design things and I think that's a good way to look at how to then design for yearbook uh, and then you can follow Pinterest pinners or boards on Pinterest I follow all three I tend to follow a lot of yearbook boards to find more inspiration and also because uh, my homepage will have like suggested pins that are related to yearbook if you are currently a yearbook staffer, you can be added to the yearbook 2015 board. All you have to do is just follow me or Teresa and just let us know, and then if this will, and then we'll add you to it. So right now we have like quite a few collaborators, and we're starting to pin for next year's design. Another cool thing about Pinterest is you can look up tags. So I could do yearbook spread, and then it will look up yearbook and spread together, and then there is some that are just actual yearbook spreads and there are some that are outline yearbook spreads for example and that's really helpful if you're really starting off you can also look up things like InDesign shortcuts and there will be tutorials for InDesign or just like these long bucket lists you can memorize if you want to so Pinterest is really a great tool for yearbooks and there's a ton of yearbook yearbookers on here as well so next we're gonna go to design so first you want to click on create a new document uh, so I already have a preset here, I'll do another one, so go to custom, and so you want to start with two pages uh, and start on page number two, otherwise if you do page number one it'll end up like this and that's not what you want, so you're going to want to do start from page number two, and then the size can vary depending on the yearbook, but a good place to start is 54P0, 72P0, that's a vertical book, and then the margins vary as well, but usually the inside margins are smaller than the outside margins and the outside margins are bigger than both the top and bottom which are usually the same but again like I said it can really differ so you can just feel free to play around with it we'll get back to you on conformity soon enough so I'm gonna click okay oh you can also save this as a preset see I already have it saved as demonstration one but I'll just do it again demonstration one and then that way you can just use it over and over again whenever you're making a new page rather than having to put in all these settings again so here's my page right the first thing to do is create a grid that you can build things on. So you're gonna go to File. I think on Win on uh, not sorry on Max it's File. On Windows it's Edit. Edit Preferences or is it File? I don't remember. It's something on Max. <laughs> and then you go to Grids. And uh, you don't really worry about the baseline grid. It's not a big deal. But you're gonna go to Document Grid and choose any color. We tend to like to use this color because it's bright, but it's also not like blinding and then you choose your subdivisions. I choose six because that frames each box as one pica, which is how I learned how to do it, but you can also do 12, uh, which is half a pica, or each box would be half a pica. So here's my grid. Well, it's not here because you have to go to uh, view, and then you have to go to grids and guides, and then show document grids, what you're interested in, so this, or just control plus, and here's your grid. So then you have to build the actual page. So the first thing to do is to place your eye line. What an eye line is, is if you look at here, and I look at your book spreads, most of these share in common one thing, which is the eye line. And the eye line, for example, this one is here. It's very small, but you can see it. It's a place where your eye literally just follows a line across the page. Um, this one, right here. Uh, most pages, except for maybe some kind of divisions and some kinds of showstoppers, don't have them, but most of them follow them. So you, so you can see some eyelines are smaller than others. We tend to use pretty big eyelines, but some schools like to use really small eyelines. So place your eyeline. You don't want to ever place it in the middle because that just cuts the page in half. It's really hard to look at for whatever reason. It's just the human eye. So 
I'm placing mine down here kind of like a third of the way. Not really a third, but it's just not in the middle. So here's what I line, and I'm going to make it three picas. Do you see how each box is one pica? Okay, so that's your eye line. Basically, eye line is no man's land, nothing goes in there. So, well, there are exceptions, but we can get to that on a later date. This is just your basic, very general, you know, page. So then the next step is to put a dominant photo. So I'm just going to make this really big picture box. So these are picture boxes, and how you can tell is they have an X in the middle. It's like X marks the spot of where you put the picture is how I remember it. So in order to place something in a picture box, you just push Control D or Command D. And I just have, you know, some random art piece, so I'm just going to drop that in here. Uh, and then you have, you have to resize it because you probably learned this throughout the year, but as you can see, this is just not going to be, not going to work out. So fitting and then fit content proportionally, or you can use a shortcut and then you're going to expand this. A trick I've learned is the shift button is basically your proportional tool. So if you ever want something to be proportional, you have to hold shift. So when I made this bigger, I held shift down so it would stay proportional. Same thing is if I want to make like a circle, I can just hold shift and then it won't be like an ellipse, ellipse like this. I can hold this uh, shift and it'll be a circle. So that's my dominant photo. Maybe it get a little smaller. Okay. Next is a headline. The headline is going to go right next to the dominant photo. You don't want the headline to be below the eye line because then the viewer disassociates the eye line, I mean the headline and the um, dominant photo, like they're not related and they should be related, so you want to have it right next to the headline, next to the dominant photo. So here's my headline, and usually your dominant, or usually your headline is something really bold or just large, so that is very clearly the headline. Um, we haven't decided on a font yet, so feel free to go and experiment. Pinterest has a lot of fonts, so that's helpful. Oh, that's too big. So, do that. Nope, that's too big too. Another way to edit font is right click, you can go to right click and then font, and then here. So yeah, like this regular. So here's my headline. I can do a couple things to it. I can make it colored, so clicking the text box, I can click it make it blue. Or I can make the inside of it white, so here it's white, and then the out make it outline, so here I'm applying a stroke to the outside. Bam, outline. Or I can just make it really thick blue, have it outlined, and have it, it filled in, and that's like this. So right now I'm just going to do that. Another cool thing you can do with this is you can change the tint of the color. So basically what this does is add, it adds more white to the color, so it makes it uh, lighter. It doesn't make it transparent, it makes it li a lighter color. So this is my headline. And you see I aligned it, if you notice I aligned it right because I, uh, I'll, I'll explain this later, but I wanted to maintain a space here that's even throughout my headline and my subhead. So next is my subhead, and usually the subhead is contrasting with the headline. It doesn't have to, but um, a lot of people like to design like bold headline, soft subhead, whatever. So this is a subhead, and I'm going to change this to Clinics Lab. We use Clinics Lab this year. And then make it bigger. Obviously the hierarchy of the fonts is the headline is going to be the biggest, subhead is second biggest, and then the copy font is third biggest. Or sometimes mod font is a little bigger than copy font, depends. And then your caption font and info book link fonts are usually smaller. So here's my, this is a subhead. And then I'm going to add text. So what I like to do for designs is, first of all, you should really use real pictures, not like our pictures. Our pictures aren't ideal like this, but I mean, it's better to have diversity. Basically, you want to just avoid using the same picture for all your filler pictures because it looks, uh, it just doesn't look correct and it really ruins how your design looks and you don't want that. So here I just have a random Wikipedia article and I'm just going to copy about M theory and put it in here. So right now you realize that this huge block of text is really ugly and no one's going to read it because it's too wide. So how you solve that is you make it two columns. Command B or Control B gives you this option. 
again that's control B so I'm gonna get two columns and an average or like a reasonable size for a column is 11 p6 sometimes we do 10 p6 it's really up to you so here's my columns and that looks a lot better but as you can see it looks really awkward because there's an extra space here uh, and this part is more lined up so what you want to do is just scoot it in so not expand the box that makes the columns bigger but just scoot it in so that it's like that and also you probably notice there's still this little cram so I'm going to drop this down a little and that's good so what's really good about great about designing like this is that you can adjust how much copy you're going to get if you realize that you know you make this shorter because it looks ugly if it's too tall like this you can make it shorter and then you know how much copy to get or how much copy you're aiming for so yeah, this is going to be my center. It's what I call a center because it's where the main focus of the whole page is going to be, the headline and the dominant co copy. I, I realize a lot of mistakes that you guys make is that um, you have this, you hope, sorry, you have this all the way over here or something. It just looks really off. So you really want to just take the extra effort and make everything line up. And InDesign will show you because it'll turn green when you're lined up like that. So that's good and uh, also notice that I'm meeting the eye line here it looks really awkward if I do this because then it goes up like that and there, there's no longer an eye line it's more of like a eye mountain range so that just doesn't <laughs> look really good next I'm gonna place space for mods I tend to like design to design my mods first but you can do this for general design is just put a placeholder for your mods for when you design your mods later and then put your mods in um, so I just just remember that this is actually your mod. And notice that I have three uh, pie keys between my dominant and my mod. That's called three degrees of separation. Basically means that I'm trying to avoid the the viewer from associating these two things together. Just like how you don't want them to associate the head uh, I mean the copy font with your like other pictures on the bottom. So that's the three degrees of separation here, and then it's here too as well. So the next is the bottom part of the picture. You usually have some kind of secondary photos that are related to the topic but aren't like I guess good enough to be your dominant copy. And here a lot of mistakes are made too. So what you want to do is have bigger stuff on like not necessarily on top but you don't want to have small stuff on top. So if I were to do something like this. It looks really bad for a couple of reasons. If I were to put pictures in this, you would just see it as a staggered kind of uh, staircase. Even with the eyeline, it still doesn't really compute as this is the center. You, your eyes can come focused to this random disorder here. So what you want to do is have it become more of like a cone shape. So what I mean by that is have these uh, these photos should be ascend or uh, should be descending in size as you go down the page because that way it's it, it makes it like go upward like all the attention becomes uh, centered in this area because this stuff goes down so here is my secondary pictures uh, obviously it's more helpful to design if you know what pictures you have because then you can design for really vertical pictures or really horizontal pictures but uh, again this is just general templates so here's my cone kind of design like kind of like a triangle here um, So another thing that you might want to notice is called near misses. So if I were to have a picture like this, it nearly misses the uh, the line that's for my dominant picture. So you can either match it or make it big enough so it doesn't become a near miss like that. So then I'm going to place placeholders in here as well. Uh, also a good idea to use pictures with a lot of color in them because like pictures with white don't look right on a design okay so I'm gonna make these sized using the shortcut control shift all E and then resize accordingly so yeah it's kind of a painstaking process especially since it's not real page it might be kind of annoying but you basically you don't even have to have like the main subject of the picture in it for your design you just want to have it filled up like you want the space to be filled up so that you can see what a design would look like with uh, real pictures 
so that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'm going to adjust my internal spacing, which is basically the, the space between each picture. So that's up by conformity, but right now I'm just going to have it at one pike of internal spacing. And you want to keep it conformed all throughout your page, which is a lot of problem I see with people is they have them like this. Which just doesn't look right because, like I said before, when you have a lot of space, it, it creates separation. And this, this looks like it's not related to the rest of the pictures, which is incorrect because it is. So you want it to only be one degree and then you associate all of this as a chunk and then you associate these as different things. That's why spacing is super, super important. Okay, so then I see, oh, you know, maybe I have a space for another mod here. So I can put a mod here, you know, understanding that it hopefully won't be a big block and hopefully it will match the cone thing. And if not, it won't be like super obtrusive. What I mean by that is that if this were to actually be a mod that was just a block, it would look really off because like I said before, it kind of has this big empty space here that just, just doesn't really do anything. So an example of a good mod that would go here would be just something like a cutout of a person because that is more airy because it has more white space in between to alleviate this you know random block here. Or what you could do is you could extend this picture all the way over here and then you'd have uh, no like, then it would just go like this and that's fine as well. So you kind of get a feel for these things when you design more. And then the only thing I'm lacking now is captions for the dominant photo and then captions for these. Usually the captions for these are just going to be, you know, text boxes that match the whatever uh, internal spacing you have. So mine's going to be one pica, right? So I'm going to keep this at one pica. Oops. And then copy a couple of this. Okay, doesn't matter what it is. And then that's my caption here and then you can have a caption down here or what you could do is just have a caption for both of them in here and then have something else here or just don't put anything here it's also like I mean if you have extra space and it's kind of small just go ahead and leave it because white space also can be aesthetically very pleasing so this is about the gist of a page obviously it's missing a folio and a full book link but that is to be determined by conformity also I mean, because like basically you could put a folio, folio in any of these corners down here, you know, wherever, and a focal plane could even go at the top. So it's really up to however you want to design. You can go ahead and even try to design your own focal links. That's all up to you. This is the basic design of a really simple page. Um, I guess next tutorial I'll get into other stuff like the pen tool and how to design a mod, but this is your generic page. Okay, so a summary. Pinterest is really great for design. Uh, here is a general like step-by-step -step way to design. Um, I really prefer you not to use a cookie cutter way and just choose whatever way is best for you like to design. Like I like to design my mods first, for example. But you know this is a great way to start. So I'm gonna also attach this to the video, or you can just pause and take notes now. So yeah, thanks for watching. I will get back to you guys with another video soon. Goodbye.